You have been born of the word. You have been born of the imperishable word of God. Now your new nature in Christ has to be fed with something that corresponds with that nature and that which corresponds with, to that nature is even what brought it into being in the first place. That's the word of God. And what is the nature of the word? The word lives and abides forever. Hello and welcome to Fresh Dew. Fresh Dew is a program that is designed for you. It's designed to build you up and to give fresh inspiration and direction for your life. My name is Pastor Shola Akinwale and the host of this program, Pastor Nkechi Ene, my pastor and my father in the Lord, has given me this opportunity to come to you with the word of God. And it's a privilege, a precious privilege that I do not take for granted. And I'm very uh, indebted to her for this opportunity. And we have been on this subject uh, that we started some episodes ago, which we dubbed Becoming Stable in Changing Times. Becoming Stable in Changing Times. And this is part four of this message series. Our text has been Psalm 46, verse 1 to 11. I'm not going to read the entire psalm. I'm just going to read uh, the first few verses down to verse 5. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, Selah. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. And so using this text as our launching pad, the entire psalm actually, we've seen that, that we saw that the psalmist here in figurative language, and it could also be taken literally, is describing changes that occur. And these changes that he's talking about are a constant factor of life. Life changes, situations change, and the, uh, the changes sometimes and many times are not good changes. For instance, we're living in troubled times, at least in this part of the world we are broadcasting from. And before our very eyes, changes are taking place, not so good changes and in, in, different, cate uh, in different levels. But then the question, is there an answer for us in God? Do we become victims or negatively affected by these circumstances and situations? Is that God's plan for his people? The answer is an absolutely, absolutely and emphatically no. God has made provision for us as his people to be stable in in changing times. And like the title of this message says, becoming stable. So oftentimes it is a process through which your life becomes sturdy, strong, and stable, such that the things going on do not negatively impact your life. And so for this to happen, taking a leaf from this Psalm here, Psalm 46, we, we mentioned the first point, and that is to become stable, then you need to be established in things that don't change. Amidst all the prevarication, the changes, the oscillations, the undulations we are seeing in our world, there are things, or better said to start with, there is someone who does not change. And that person happens to be our God. And so when we know the character of God, that's the first thing we said, uh, uh, on that becoming established in things that don't change. God's character does not change. He's the same. And we've looked at his goodness, that his goodness does not change. And then in our last episode, uh, I believe we looked at another aspect of God's character, which is his faithfulness. And I believe that these things that we're sharing, which are just teasers actually, but they, in them you'll find the truth you need to position yourself to experience uh, the best of God and make your life stable and constant. So let's take it up, uh, take it a step further today. So we've looked at God's character does not change. Another thing that does not change, which we should base our lives upon, very, very important, equally important, is that we should be established in being established in things that don't change. Number two now, remember the first one was God's character. Under God's character, we looked at his goodness and his faithfulness. But now second thing under God's uh in things that don't change, is God's word. 
God's word does not change. And I love this. You know, if you want to be stable in your life, your life, you don't want your life to be moved. You want your life to be a constant coast of God's goodness, irrespective of what is going on. You know, the things that will go on in the world will not fluster you. Then your life must be founded on God's word. You know, you can walk with God so much that things are going on around you. You see them going on, but your, your response in those situations is to be a help to other people, giving, lending, lending or giving helping hands to bring people out of the situation, not scurrying and running about for yourself necessarily. Yes, you can get to that place in God and where primarily what goes on does not affect you, not because you are in denial. I mean, even if you are in denial, the kind of things going on, like in our country, Nigeria right now, if you are in denial, there are some things you cannot use denial for. There are certain kinds of situations that you cannot fake, so to speak. You either are standing on something that does not change and cannot be moved, or the circumstance will get the better of you. So we're looking at God's word. Luke 21, verse 23, there Jesus says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Now, what is going on in Luke chapter 21? Well, Luke chapter 21 parallels with the other evangelists, synoptic evangelists, Matthew 24 and Mark chapter 13. And they, 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 they both, the, the three of them rather, all contain Jesus' teaching on the end times. And in there, in that context, Jesus was discussing and, uh, things going on at the end of age, of the age. And all these events, what we can call eschatological events, that are prognosticating and signifying his coming to the earth. And it, of course, the, the, the context of the passage shows that it, it's, it's him coming to the earth not so much of the rapture, but his second coming where he'll come physically on this earth. And let me not get into <laughs> all of the eschatological things about that. But Jesus is showing, uh, about the, showing us these events, pointing to the fact that a lot of changes are going to take place. And then he now tells us, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. You see, that sounds like what we read in uh, Psalm 46. You know, even though the, uh, you know, the earth moves and it totters and so forth. Now we are seeing that Jesus is saying things are going to go very bad. Things are going to get worse. Things are going to be seriously affecting folks on the earth. But he's saying that all these things will take place, but my word will never, will by no means pass away. He's giving us a hint, therefore, how we can stay, we can be in this world while these things are going on, but be unaffected. And that can happen when we fix our lives on his word. If you look at Psalm 102, verse 26, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, it talks about the earth and the heaven passing away. In, verse, in Psalm 102, verse 26, well, from verse 25, of old you have laid the foundation of the earth and the heavens are the works of your hands. They will perish. What are they? The heavens and the earth, but you will endure. Second Peter 3.10, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens will pass away with a great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. So we see that the heavens will pass away, the earth will pass away, but the word of God remains constant. So amidst all these fluctuations occurring, Jesus is showing us that his word, the word of God, remains stable. And listen now, those who live by the word of God will have the attributes of the word of God in their lives, they will be, which is stability. Notice he says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. You know, like I said at the very beginning, I believe it's in episode one, it is important that you identify things that don't change and base your, base your life on them. For instance, let me just make a detour, a necess, uh, necessary one. How, you know, don't put your confidence and your identity in how you look or in the money you have. You know why? Those things can change. 
I mean, if you are, if, if for a lady, for a girl, for instance, is the prettiest girl in class or in the block, and everybody, I mean, she has the attention of all the boys, and they're all buzzing around her like a bee, and all of those things guys do with fine girls and so forth. And it will enter the head of the girl because she thinks everybody has told her, rightly or wrongly, that she's the finest girl. All that needs to happen is for a final girl to come to class. That's all that needs to happen. <laughs> and her market is over. Because all those same boys that were buzzing around her, guess what will happen? They'll flock to the next most beautiful person and so forth. What's my point? If that lady is going to gain her confidence or her identity, it cannot be in things that are, that are fleeting and that are transient. Things, you must identify things that do not change and base your life on them. The same thing is with the Word of God. Identify the Word of God, realizing its power and potency. That is that it does not change. And when that comes into your life, it will give your life a sense of stability and constancy. And really, as a child of God, the reason why you need to do this is because you, have, you are a product of the Word of God. So it's actually a misnomer and it's an aberration if you base your life on something else. Let me show you this. Look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23 to 25. It says, Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the Word of God, which lives and abides forever. I want you to observe. It says that the word lives and abides forever, 24, because all flesh, all flesh is as grass and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withers and its flower falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Now, this is the word which by the gospel was preached to you. Now, if you notice in verse 23, he's contrasting corruptible seed with incorruptible seed. So he's, he's comparing trusting the perishable with the imperishable, all right? He's trusting the seed of man with the seed of God. He calls this seed the word of God. And he says the word of God does what? It lives and it abides forever. And then in verse 24, it now says that human beings, all flesh is as grass. And he says the flat grass withers the flower falls away. And then in verse 25, it repeats what he said in verse 23 with a different twist. And now says, it says, but the word of the Lord endures forever. So in these verses, the eternal is juxtaposed with the temporal, the corruptible with the incorruptible flesh that is human nature and the transience in nature is compared with with the word of God. And he's telling us that the word of God abides forever. So which one should, you, should, should gain your appeal? Which one should catch your fancy? Which one should you base your life on? You see, he's, he's already given you the answer. He's shown you that the word of God abides forever. So by design, listen, you are built to last, like I said, because you have already been born of the word of God. Look at what he says in verse 23. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible through the word of God, which abides forever. So in your spirit man as a child of God, on the inside of you, in the real, the real you, your spirit is a product of the spirit of God. Your spirit is a product of the word of God. You have been born again by the word of God and by the spirit of God. Now, because you have been born again by the word of God and by the spirit of God, then your life should be stable. But when we look at it and we can, we can say rightly that not every Christian who has been born again, is, 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 is their lives are stable. If their lives are stable, I won't be teaching this message in order to make you stable in, ch in changing times. All right, what is the problem? The problem is because they are not feeding their new nature with things that correspond to it. I'm going to say that again. Your spirit man, your new nature in Christ is a product of the word of God that does not change, that does not, that abides forever, right? That lives and abides forever, that endures forever. But you may be experiencing uh, 
situations that are flustering you, things that are getting the better of you, you know that you are not stable. The issue is not because you're not born again. The issue is not because you don't have the nature of Christ in you. The issue is because that nature of Christ in you probably and most likely has that nature has not been fed to bring it to the point where you are now stable. So if you build your life on the word of God, you remain unchanging because you are building with fail-safe material. And as I was saying, your new nature in Christ, listen, needs to be fed with the word of God. Feed your nature, get this as a child of God, feed your nature with things that correspond to it. Things that correspond to, 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 to it. Now, let me show you this verse that brings that out. We, first, we just read 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23 to 25. But you see, the Bible was not written in chapters and verses. So that tells us that sometimes you have to remove those chapters and it will help you see some things. Now, verse chapter 1 ends in verse 25. But let me read 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. So there's just one verse in between. The context is still the same. Now, observe. It says, as newborn babes desire, it says, the pure milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Now, when I study the Bible, I like to meditate it. When I read the Bible, I should say, I like to meditate it. I like to study it. When you look at this verse closely, 1 Peter 2, 2, it corresponds with 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. It corresponds with it. How do I say so? First and foremost, both of them deal with the word of God. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23, it says, it says, the word of God. All right. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, it talks about the milk of the word of God. Number two, there are different met metaphors for the word. In 1 Peter chapter 2, uh, 1 Peter 1, verse 23, the metaphor there is seed. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, it is milk. Another major comparison which shows the similarity is that it also shows us the essential nature of the word. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 23, it says that the word lives and abides forever. It shows us its perpetuity its intrinsic nature. But now in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, Peter is using a different metaphor. And whereas it says in chapter 1, verse 23, incorruptible seed, here it says pure milk, pure milk. Now there is a similarity between incorruptible and pure. In fact, both can be used synonymously. Incorruptible means imperishable and pure means unadulterated, unadulterated. So the word finds some correspondence. Again, that word uh, pure, unadulterated, finds some correspondence with corruptible in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 23. What Peter is telling us is this. You have been born again. This is another comparison. In verse 2, 1 Peter 2, 2, he's referring to as newborn babes. He's taking a leaf from 1 Peter 2.23 where he says, having been born again. So what is Peter saying? You have been born of the word. You have been born of the imperishable word of God. Now your new nature in Christ has to be fed with something that corresponds with that nature and that which corresponds with, to that nature is even what brought it into being in the first place. That's the word of God. And what is the nature of the word? The word lives and abides forever. So when, when, that's why when a person gets born again, one of the very first things you can do for them is to see that they get established in the word of God. If they get established in the word of God. When you get born again, that's not the time to feed on other things. And as a child of God, you must be constantly feeding your nature with things that correspond with it. And you know, God established this in creation. When God made man, man's body was formed from the dust of the earth, right? And then man's, man's spirit came from God. Man's spirit and soul came from God. Now here is this, the thing. By virtue of the source, God established the basis of sustenance. By virtue of the source, God established the basis of sustenance. Why do I say so? Where do we get our food from? 
We get our food from the ground, basically. That feeds our body. Why? Our body was formed from the dust of the ground. He said, oh, what of meat? Well, the beasts of the field were equally made from the dust of the earth. That's where our body is sustained from. So what part, where, where do you sustain your inner man? How do you sustain your inner man? You know, there are people who, when they feel depressed and when they feel moody, you know what some people do? They eat. That does not solve the problem. You must sustain your inner man with something that corresponds with his nature. And God has given you his word because the life of God abides in his word. And when you get into the word of God and you begin to feed on the word of God, my brother, my sister, you become your spirit man, your soul, your entire inner man, your heart, I should probably use that word. Your heart takes on the complexion. Your heart takes on the essence of the word of God. Then your life becomes stable. Your life becomes rock solid and situations will not fluster you. So your new nature in Christ must be fed with something that accords and agrees with it, something that is pure and that is the word. When you take in the word, you become stable and the inborn nature in you will be will find expression all right so the word of god lives and abides forever and something else in this regard as we talk about this is that the word of god is fixed and does not change you see we've read in all those verses that says the word of god abides forever that speaks of the eternal nature of the word of god if you look at psalm 119 verse 89 it says forever o lord your word is settled in heaven. And Psalm 119 verse 89 in the ESV says that your word is firmly fixed in the heavens. Why is it firmly fixed in the heavens? Well, the, I think the matter, the, the issue is clear. You cannot go to heaven and change it because it's firmly fixed in heaven. But then for that word to work and produce in your life, it must not only be firmly fixed in heaven, the word must equally become firmly fixed and established in your heart. It is when that word is fixed and established in your heart, then stability begins to come. Then constancy begins to come. Permanence begins to come. And then you are like that man who built his house on the rock. The winds blew, the storms came, but the house was rock solid and it did not fall. And that will be your life as you build your life on the word of God. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for showing us that we can become stable as we interact with your incorruptible word and receive your unadulterated word. May this be our desire, may it be our experience. In Jesus' name, amen. Are you alive but not really living life? Do you know somewhere deep down that something needs to change in the course of your life? Does it feel like you have lost your way in life, yet to others you seem to know your way? Jesus is the way, the truth and the life. Can you believe that somewhere on the inside of you? Do you believe it? He is the answer to every question and he loves you just the way you are. Today he's waiting for you with arms open wide and he wants you just the way you are. Will you make a decision today to surrender your life to him and run into those outstretched arms? If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud meaning it from the depth of your heart and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised. I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen.
Amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. Now you need to grow in your new faith. And what has happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. We can help you grow in your new faith. Please call us at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at freshdew.tv and we'll be here for you. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Freshdew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Freshdew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website, www.freshdew.tv. Once again, thanks for being with us today, and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.